So what we saw in both that rich uncle example and the e-text example um, was we had an exponential function whose base was 2, right? We had this doubling function. So um, we've already talked about this, but just again, remember that since this base, this b, is 1 plus that constant percentage rate r, where r is written, the, taking the percentage written as a decimal, um, we want to think a little bit more about what this r and these b values mean, okay? So when the base is greater than 1, like in the example we saw, 2, right? The exponential function is increasing. We have exponential growth. So what does the basic shape of that look like? Well, it looks a lot like the two um, graphs we've seen so far, where we have um, the values don't reach 0, but they start out real small, and then they very quickly increase. Now, why would it make sense that this function is increasing? Well, if you continue to um, multiply, so multiplying by a number greater than 1 will continually increase the size of the value, right? So if I just keep multiplying by 2, multiplying by 2, multiplying by 2, it's going to continually increase the value. So this is going to give us exponential growth, right? So hopefully that makes sense, right? If your base is bigger than 1, you, you repeatedly multiply by something bigger than 1, that's going to make the size just go up. So since b is equal to 1 plus r, so let's, so if b is greater than 1, right, if b is greater than 1, what kinds of r values are we talking about, right? So this b value, so 1 plus r, is greater than 1. So what kind of r values will we have? Well, let's solve this inequality algebraically. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides of this inequality. And subtracting does not flip my inequality or anything like that. So I'm just left with r greater than, and over here, 0, r greater than 0. So in other words, positive values, positive values. Positive values of r are going to make the, are going to give us exponential growth. So what does it mean to have a positive um, percentage rate? Remember that this r is our percentage rate. So it's talking about if I have a positive percentage rate, so I have something like a 5% um, uh, change, well, that's going to be an increase, right? So I'm, I might not be going up by much, right? R is greater than zero, but that's gonna, that percentage is going to give me a growth, right? I'm increasing. Okay, let's look at what happens if B is between zero and one. So if the base is between zero and one, so that would be examples like B equals a half or B equals one-tenth, things like that. Um, that's going to give us an exponential decreasing. That's exponential decay, right? Because what's happening is we're continually multiplying by a half or a tenth, right? So you just keep multiplying by something that's, that, that's going to make the numbers go smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Again, never reaching zero. Um, and if we move in the negative direction, it's going to be um, kind of like when we were doing that table of values. We're going in the opposite direction. It's going to be like multiplying by 2 or multiplying by 10. So it's going to actually look like a mirror image of the ones that we just saw. So this is exponential decay. Okay, now why does it make sense that exponential decay or b values between 0 and 1, why is it decreasing? Well, if you just keep it repeatedly multiplying by a value between 0 and 1, that decreases the value, right? If I take something and I make it go down, I say multiply it by a half, that's going to make the value get smaller. Okay, so what kinds of values do we have if these b values or this 1 plus r values are between 0 and 1, right? So b is between 0 and 1. So if we subtract 1 to solve this compound inequality, so that should be a math 100 skill that you know or a high school skill, we're looking at r values between negative 1 and 0. Remember, r is that percentage rate written as a decimal, right? So we're looking at negative r values um, between 0 and negative 1. So remember, at negative 1, this is like a negative 100%, right? Or any r value in here, you could say something like r is negative 5%. That would be like losing 5%. So these are going to be our exponential decay because you are losing value, losing money, losing population, losing whatever it is that you have. Um, we don't have to worry about our values being um, more negative than negative 100 because you can't get any bigger than negative 100% loss, right? 
Okay, uh, so we have our two sort of scenarios. Let's just recap. When we talk about exponential functions, we have either b as being greater than 1, so anything greater than 1 is going to be exponential growth. Between 0 and 1, we've got exponential decay. And you might be wondering, well, what about other values of b? So what about if b is equal to 0 or b is equal to 1? Or what if b is negative? So let's talk about those cases. Um, if b were 0, if b is 0, then what's that mean? Well, that's the function f of x equals a times 0 to the x, right? So that's just going to give us the function f of x equals 0, right? That is a linear function. That is a constant function. So uh, linear, it's a line or it's a constant function, right? Hopefully you can even picture it. It's literally just this horizontal line, the, the x-axis. It's just the height is just always 0. Um, these are going to be v values, remember, b is 1 plus r. So if 1 plus r is 0, we're talking about r equaling negative 1. This is our 100% loss, really, if you're thinking about it. So no matter what value you may have started with, you immediately lose everything. And then you, once you've lost everything, you can't lose anything more, right? You're, you're just down to 0. So this isn't an exponential function. It's a, it's a constant function. Um, and so not exponential at all. So we don't think about b equals 0 being exponential. What about if b is equal to 1? What kind of function is that going to give us? So imagine a little 1 in here. That's just going to be f of x equals a. That's also a line. It's also a constant function. It's just where your function is up at whatever a is and just stays at a. So again, what kind of r value are we thinking about here? That would be where r is 0. So that's a um, 0% change, right? No, no growth, no loss either, but you're just staying at that. You started with $3 and you just stayed $3 forever. No change, right? So that is also not exponential. We're not going to consider that exponential. So both of those are linear. So again, our two cases so far would be if B is greater than 1, we're talking about exponential growth. And if B was between 0 and 1, we had our decay. We don't consider 0 or 1 being linear. What about values less than 0? So let's think about what can be can b be negative? Um, and so and if so, what would it be? Well, so if b is negative, so we're talking about like 1 plus r being negative. So 1 plus r being less than 0, what would that even mean? Solving, we have r would have to be less than 1, negative 1. Remember that negative 1 is one, negative 100% because we're writing this as a, as a decimal. So you can't have a rate of losing more than everything you have. Um, and so again, we don't consider this, an, they don't call this exponential. But worse than that, let's just think about an actual example of it. So what if we try to just force like, Okay, maybe I'm going to just go into debt so I can lose more than everything I have because I'm just going to say my, I'm losing 200%. Um, so if I had negative 2 as my base, what kind of function would this even be? Um, and what I want us to realize is that for certain values, like take just for one example, if x is equal to 1 half, we would have, this would be, um, y would be the square root of negative 2. And that's an imaginary number. So exponential functions with a negative base um, aren't continuous. They, they have places where they're imaginary. We're not going to have uh, real numbers. Um, so it's not a real function. So we're not going to consider that scenario either. So the two cases we're really going to look at are b values greater than 1 are our growth, exponential growth, and b values between 0 and 1 are exponential decay. And all other values we're going to not call exponential.